So today, thanks for joining me. We've got a 2009 ESP LTD MH250 NT. This is made in the Samic plant in Indonesia. We've got a 12 inch radius, so nice sort of easy radius on it and a standard 25 and a half inch scale. Really solid guitar, nice sort of uh, flame finish on this one. We, I thought this would be a cool one to do because we are gonna be changing quite a lot of the hardware. We're gonna be sticking a brand new stereo pure tone jack, really good bit of kit and then the customers provided a bunch of Japanese Goto uh, hardware so we've got a new output jack plate we've got a couple of new knurled gold finish knobs we've got some new Goto machine heads we did a bit of research on these trying to match up the not only the post diameter but the the screw hole on the back and it looks to me like they're pretty similar we're gonna start with this as well. But it looks like we've got a kind of a similar finish. So we'll see how we get on with them. If we've got to redrill it, we've got to redrill it, but hopefully we won't have to. And we're gonna be replacing the Tunematic bridge. So nothing wrong with this one. It's just the, the stock one that comes with it, but the customer wants to just go all gold on the hardware. So that's what we're gonna be doing, fitting this nice uh, go-to thing. So the only issue with this is we're gonna to have to file down some of the uh, saddles. You kind of get like a pre-slot to kind of like a, a, as your starting point. Um, um, but we're going to be in drop C with 60 to 12 gauge strings on so nice chunky bottom string So we'll do it a bit, a bit of filing on that But to start with what we're going to do is just take the strings off give it a bit of a clean and then remove the machine heads So let's wind these back a little bit So first thing we're going to do is remove these bad boys. So town bridge is falling off. Let's put bang that over there. So little Phillips head screw to get these off. And it's always handy to keep yourself a little pot just to keep all your bits in. Put them over there. Just so none of your parts get lost. So yeah, these are just the standard ESP machine heads he was originally going to go for locking tuners and as convenient as locking tuners can be personally I prefer just a standard solid machine head non-locking and the reason for that is because if you if you string it correctly put at least a couple of winds around it a couple of full winds that's you know no notches in it and you pull all the slack through give him a good stretch you've got a much better chance of stretching that string to, you know with a good amount of force in order to keep the guitar in tune. What I don't like about locking machine heads is that as soon as, especially on your thicker, you know, if you've got big, thick, low strings on the bottom, you can't really pull the string and tighten it enough because as you do, it'll start to snap the string. And where the string sits in, in the middle of there and the post that comes into it, if you've got a really thick string in there, the thicker it is, the more susceptible it is to that pin actually pushing into the winds and pulling it out and what you find is it'll snap your string which is obviously not what you want so personally you know I've got nothing against locking tuners but given the choice I would always prefer non-locking versus locking I can't see really it doesn't really save you that much time you know what I mean in the long run you're talking about what an extra five minutes of a bit of winding for the sake of being able to stretch the string properly so I'd always recommend non-locking tuners no, uh, no offence to anyone that does like them or does use them because I suppose they are quite convenient but not for me personally. So we're almost done removing these as always using this uh, excellent music nomad for gloss finishes. Really nice little cleaner sort of you know does everything everything it says on the tin nothing more nothing less. The thing I really like about this cleaner actually is you can use it on Gibson Nitro finishes. Sometimes the Dunlop 65 stuff, which I've always used, again, it's a great polish. Not so great on Nitro finish guitars. You can get, you end up getting this sort of like weird haze on the finish. And if you, if you, you know, if you go hell for leather rubbing down on it, 
and end up putting scratches in your guitar. So the Music Nomad one is a fantastic little product and you don't get any of that sort of hazing. So I'm just going to remove this truss rod cover while we've got everything overexposed. I might as well give it a bit of a clean. And while we're here as well, just going to clean the inside of the truss rod hole. Again, no one's even really going to see it, are they? But I just like to know that everything's nice and clean. So we're just going to spray a little bit of this stuff on the end of the cotton bud. Get in there, get that nice and clean. See all that gross dirt. Let's get these machine heads out and see what we're doing. Give a bit of a clean on the back there as well. I do really like the headstocks on these guitars. I don't know what it is about it. It's just that classic metal headstock. I don't know, just looks cool. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, maybe it's just me. I say weird things sometimes, but you know, you've got to have a laugh in life, haven't you? So look at these beautiful, beautiful things. So we're just going to eye up at the moment the screw hole. And as we suspected, that is going to fit absolutely perfectly. So that's the ideal situation where um, we're not having to drill anything. So the screw holes are matching up perfectly. So before we start fitting them, we're just going to have a look at the actual length of the post because on different types of machine heads, these can be different lengths. Sometimes you'll get them in three different sizes, sort of like a, a short, medium and long. And then depending on what string you're putting it on will depend on what length post you go for generally the longer the post the thicker the string you can just feel you know what i mean the, the difference between a japanese goto product and you know a, a cheap sort of something else product off amazon or so you know it, yeah you can probably get these for 20 quid from china or whatever but these i think these run about 65 quid but you really can feel the difference the main difference you're gonna you're gonna notice it is an actual the actual gear ratio so it's gonna feel smoother it's gonna be adjustable as well so if you like it really tight you can have it tight if you like it loose you can have it loose i tend to sort of set it in the middle somewhere so we'll get these lovely gold screws out as well, ready to go. We've got a six nuts, six washers, six machine heads. So now I'm just going to line all these up and just have a look at the post heights. Now they to me look all the same, but just to be triple sure, measure once, measure twice, cut once as they say. So the height of that is what we're running there, about 17 mil. 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, sweet. So they're all the identical, the, uh, the shaft is identical on all of them. So this is pretty much as easy as it gets changing your machine heads. The screw holes are the same. The, the, we, we haven't got to widen the, uh, the post, post holes because they're, they're all ready to go. So I'm just going to go ahead and start putting these into position. So as we go, I'm literally just going to pop it in, pop the screws in. The other thing you want to make sure when you're putting these screws in is that it, they are, that it feels tight when it's going in there. Okay. If it's feeling really loose and it's not really gripping, it's not going to do its job properly. So in that situation, what I'd do is probably fill the hole with something, maybe put a little matchstick in there just to sort of make it a bit tighter when it's going in. So that fits lovely. Keep going with these. Getting fingerprints all over this. Lovely gold hardware. Forgot my gloves. We can make a few mistakes here and there. It's all good and it's free. So, you know, you're not paid anything to watch this, have you? Free piping hot content. Right, so carry on with this. Just make sure as well that these are flat against the wood, which they are or as flat as they're going to be for now. Um, obviously when we when we put the nuts in later on, um, that's going to pull the, the back of the machine head closer to the wood and re-secure it. But at the moment, we're just getting these in and I'm not over-tightening them at the moment, just leaving them a little bit loose. 
Now the only issue here is the manufacturer, by the looks, I don't know if you can see, there's a bit of a funny angle on that, and it's because they've put the drill hole in the wrong place. So, I don't really like that. So let's fix it. So, the drill hole wants to be more like there. Come on LTD, sort it out mate. The drill hole's on the bloody piss. What I'm going to do with this is I'm going to secure it from the back, just so it's in position. Again, we're not over tightening anything. We're just putting it in the position that we, we want it to be and we want it to stay. I will give it just a little, just a little tighten. You also want to be careful as well when you're tightening the nuts on the front of the headstock. You don't want to do it too tight because you can crack the lacquer, crack the paint. And then, do you know what I mean? You're up slack alley. 1.5 mil wood bit. Let's just measure this up as well so we don't go too far with it. My dad taught me this little trick. Get your tape, get the end of your bit, measure to where you want to go. Thin that off a little. There you go. Tape him off. And then you've got a bit of a stop stop gauge there then, aren't you? You know what I mean? Tricks of the trade, mate, innit? Tricks of the trade. So, lovely jubbly. So, let's re-drill this hole then. Yeah, lovely and straight then now. Beautiful. Obviously as well, really important to, to make these little pilot holes, because if you don't, you end up finding it so difficult to get that screw in that you'll start having to absolutely wang on it with a screwdriver and you'll end up threading the screw. And then once again, you find yourself in slack alley. Good thing to do here as well is just uh, pop a straight edge against the edge of it. Sorry for the jingle jangle. So then that gives you a nice visual representation to make sure that they're all where you want to be. That's a little off, that one. Yeah, that's looking pretty sweet. So we're going to drop all these on. And as I said before, you're really not looking to over tighten these at all. The reason you don't need to massively over tighten these Anybody will know uh, who's changed these before or had a guitar before with loose machine heads. Obviously, when the machine head starts to go loose, your string's gonna it's gonna affect the tuning of the string, which we don't want, especially if you're gigging. I use a little bit of this stuff, um, Abro Threadlock. I don't know if you can see that there. There you go. Look at that lovely camera angle. Right, so we're literally just gonna drop a tiny little bit of this. You don't want too much. It's always when you start filming, isn't it? What's really handy with this is, um, a little top tip, is if you want to use it, take the cap off. Yeah, fucking idiot. Right then, just a dab. See that? That's all you need. Just a tiny little dab, little dot. Drop it in there, okay. And then you're gonna tighten it up. And we're literally just gonna tighten it up just with your fingers. You don't want to be absolutely cranking on there. Just so it's finger tight like that. See, we're not going to crack anything around the edges. Do that. And literally, we're just going to do the same on all six of them. So, nothing fancy. But this is just a little, little tip. And all this is going to do is just stop it from working itself free more than anything. I learned about this stuff when I was uh, fixing up my bike. Harley Davidson's are renowned for bolts falling off and things getting rattled and shook off and broken. A good friend of mine recommended when I was rebuilding it all to put thread lock on everything and touch wood since then none of the screws or the bolts have come out so it's really good stuff recommend it bit of a bit of a motor trade uh, tip I guess but especially if you're doing a lot of gigs you know what I mean you're gigging, you're changing your strings every day, every other day or whatever. Obviously every time 
you stretch those strings and you're pulling on it like that, you're going to wiggle things loose every now and again. And the good thing with the thread lock is, it's not going to, it's not going to do it too much. Um, as in, if you need to remove it, you literally just twist it. Finger tighten on that, so that's our G string. Just keeping a good eyeball, making sure we've got a nice straight line on those machine heads as well. So, look at that. Some lovely gold machine heads. Ordinarily, I would move on to the neck next, but because we're doing a lot of hardware changes, I'm going to move on to the hardware next just to get everything fixed into position so our next little job is removing these posts so we're as i said before we're replacing it with this thing the goto tailpiece it comes with its own posts and these are the correct these are kind of like the gibson style ones you kind of get the epiphone style has got a flat head and gibson ones haven't you just have to sort of lift it up and adjust it that way so this is a great little tool i got this from Stu Mac a long time ago. This is a really nice little tool for removing hardware. Just allows you to nicely, softly remove the post. And it really nicely just pulls everything out nice and uniform. And that's it, she's out. So really nice clean way of removing hardware from a guitar. Same again on this one. You can get these from Stu Mac, Stu Mac Donald. Um, if you haven't heard of it, sort your life out. Um, Stu Mac make some of the best luthier tools in the whole wide world. They're pretty much the industry standard. Go to any luthier shop, any any guitar maker in the world, and you're guaranteed to find a Stu Mac tool in there somewhere. A lot of my tools come from there. Not the cheapest, but they are the best. So, you know. The buys cheap, the buys twice, as my friend Mr. Daniel Norris says. So these are out. So let's get the packaging open and see. This looks like it's going to be quite straightforward. This is the thing: if you research your hardware and you buy the right stuff, then it's a lot less messing about. So it's a little bit loosey goosey. Okay, that's fine. It's not quite sitting down so we've got about two mil of extra space we need to drill for this mil and a half so what are we going to do here then we're going to measure the width of the post now you can do this with a digital caliper uh, i prefer to just do it eyeball it 12 mil 12 millimeters 12 millimeters and we're literally going to add two millimeters of depth measure twice cut once mr jeff at matamp used to scream that at me when he was throwing hammers at me measure twice cut once long time ago when i worked at matamp building cabinets and covering cabinets he used to shout at me and throw tools at me but tell you what didn't forget off we go and let's see okay almost all the way in there i reckon about another millimeter and we should be sweet now i'm sure there's probably well, I hope there's some people out there watching this that really know what they're doing, luthiers and stuff. And they're probably thinking, why is he doing it like that? Why is he not doing it on a drill press? Well, because I haven't got a drill press. And a lot of the point of these videos is to show people what you can do with just... I mean, I know I've got a few fancy stew Mac tools and stuff like that, but none of this is, you know stuff that is particularly expensive or isn't stuff that you can get delivered within a couple of days. This is for people who you know, are doing this at home, they're doing it on their sofa, they're doing it on the kitchen table or whatever. And I'm just trying to show you rudimentary ways of doing things with basic tools. There's no point showing you, oh, I've got this five grand leveling machine and stuff like that, because it's just not, you know, what most people have got. So I'm hoping that with these vids, 
I'm just showing you kind of what's possible with just using everyday tools that you've got around the house. Before we move on to the other one then, we're gonna secure this into place. Now, I like to use nylon tape for this. So again, this is something you can get off Amazon. It's a uh, fabric, fabric tape rather than your electrical tape. And it's really handy for stuff like this where the hole is a little bit bigger than you need it to be. Now we wanna do this nice and neat. So we're gonna start with a nice clean edge. Shout out Ernest Wright scissors. Uh, been making scissors in Sheffield for 120 years or something crazy like that. Absolutely mega, made in Sheffield, look at that. So, make sure you've got some nice sharp, sh sharp scissors, sharp scissors. Some nice sharp, sharp, fuck it, oh man, I'm losing my mind here. And then we're just gonna give it a couple of winds around here. And what we're essentially doing with this now is widening the diameter of the post. Okay. So we've gone around that a couple of times. Again, gonna cut it nice and neat. You also wanna make sure that you've got tape that covers the majority of the post. If you just put a tiny little bit of really thin tape in the middle, then it's gonna wiggle like that when it's in the middle. But that looks pretty good. So we're gonna push it into position and see how tight that is going in. Maybe a little too tight, let's see how we go. Yeah, I'd say that's a little too tight. So we'll just wiggle it out and we'll just pull a little bit of the tape back. And what you're doing here is you're sort of essentially adjusting, like I said, adjusting the diameter of the post. But if it's a little bit too big, you just take a little bit of tape off. Easy peasy. Oh. Oh, look at that. That is in there. All the way in there. Beautiful. All right, so that's in position. It's flat to the wood. It's not wiggling around anywhere. We'll just check that this fits in okay. I can't see of any reason why it wouldn't. And then just make sure when that's in position that it's not wiggling around too much. It's not wiggling around at all. Very professional. Right, okay, so on to the next one. Same again. So I don't know if you can see in there, if we look here, see a little wire in there. That's our ground wire. So really important that you've got a ground wire going from the electronics here to either where your strings come through or on any metal bit of the hardware really, but ten, they tend to be either under the post there or if you've got a fixed tail piece with you know, your sort of six saddles here, they tend to like fender, they'll put the, the little wire underneath it. You'll never see it normally unless you take it apart. But what that does is it basically grounds all the metal elements, so your strings, your machine heads, the hardware, all everything down here it grounds it to the back of the pots and obviously it's going to mean that you're going to get no noise coming out we know this is going to wiggle around so all we're doing at the moment is just making sure that that fits to there and now the other thing that is going to be a bit of an issue now is we're going to be wrapping this in fabric tape to widen the diameter so what that means is it means the ground wire isn't going to touch the metal and that's not a good thing so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this wire out a little bit and I'm going to make sure that the bottom of this wire is at the bottom end of this okay so before it was making contact with air it's not it's no longer going to make contact with air because we're going to put this tape around it to widen the diameter so what I'm doing is moving the wire so it's there underneath so when we push it in the wire is going to touch there now you can also do what's called a continuity test to make sure that this is working properly so let's just make sure first that that wire, by the way, these are Lindstrom. Lindstrom makes some absolutely mega um, electronic tools. So pretty much everything I've got, needle nose pliers, flat pliers, snips, 
they're all Lindstrom. They're really expensive. They're about 50 quid a pop. But bloody hell, I've had these 10 years, I think. They've never let me down. So highly recommend. I'm a firm believer in making sure you've got good tools for the job. Now, another thing now with this is, now we've got that wire there. That's obviously gonna push the post out a little bit. So let's see if it still clears and it's not going to. So what we need to do now then is a bit of a pain in the ass. So what's happening now is the wire, that the ground wire that I've just pulled through, because it's still got its jacket on it, is pushing out on the inside. So what we're gonna do now is just cut back the insulation on the wire. Now, fortunately, there's plenty of slack on this ground wire, which is really nice. Now, I was saying about spending 50 quid on these bad boys. However, these cost nine pounds. And you'll never guess where I got them from. I got them from a pet grooming shop. And these are actually for cutting dog toenails which sounds a bit silly, doesn't it? But they're really good because if you look in the middle, is that focusing all right? Yeah. If you look at the middle, see how you've got a curved edge on them? Got a nice little curved edge here, look. And a cable, of course, is circular. It's not square. So it makes sense to have snips that cut in a circle. If you use these, to cut your wire. It's just gonna cut it in a straight line. There we go, that's sweet focus. So obviously when you cut like that, it's just gonna cut the wire flat. Now, that's fine for the end of it, but for the actual cable bit, I use these. They cost a fiver, I'm sure you can buy them on Amazon. And it just gives it a nice little curve, so. You do have to be careful, uh, they take a bit of getting used to, obviously you don't want to pull them too much. I'm just going to make a small little incision there and it's going to cut the wire in a nice circle. And then what we'll do, just to make sure everything stays intact and where it needs to be, we'll just drop a little bit of solder. Use Autosol solder for this. Just a little bit, tin a little bit at the end here, and all we're doing is just stopping that from moving around. Now, I'm not gonna do this all the way on the wire, because I still want it to be quite flexible. If you solder the whole lot of the wire, then it's gonna make the whole thing rigid, and if, chances are when you start bending it, it'll snap. So, you want it loosey-goosey in the middle, and I've just basically sealed it at the end there with a little bit of solder. You don't need a lot just a little bit and we've got a nice solid ground wire now and now we're going to drop this down so we've got a nice long ground wire now but what we really want is all the jacket the rubber bit of the wire inside the guitar we don't want it inside this hole because it's going to push against the, the, the post and we really don't want that so as i said we've still got the metal bit exposed at the bottom that's where the ground wire is going to hit we'll push this bad boy in that's now nice and tight Oh yeah, I'll tighten that all the way to the bottom. Just make sure that's fixed in. And that's exactly where it needs to be. Beautiful. We're now ready to pop our Tunematty bridge on. I do this the, the sort of the Gibson way, I guess. So the screws are gonna be facing the headstock rather than facing away from it. You kind of want the string to be going up and onto these saddles. I'm gonna drop him onto there and that's it for now. Now, we will most likely be bringing these up. That's gonna stay where it is for now. Next, we will move on to the electronic. First thing we're gonna do is take the back of this off. So let's move some of these bad boys. So I've got a battery here that we've already tested. It's not the cleanest in the back here. However, everything is working as it should. So, because this is a little time sensitive, I'm just gonna crack on with removing the output jack and installing the new one. So, that's off. 
That's off. Screws are out. So we've got the battery wire on the ring, the white wire on the sleeve. I'll just make a quick note of this while I'm working, just on my computer. So white is the tip and the nine volt is the ring. Let's fire this up. So we're a little bit limited on how much length we've got on these wires. So we'll just desolder for now and clean them up afterwards. Got our new output jack. As I said, it's a pure tone stereo jack. And we've also got, put a little gold, you can't get these in gold, but put a little gold uh, washer on the end of it for him as well. Before we wire that up, I'm just gonna get this new plate ready to go. And just pull these wires through the hole. All right. And we're just gonna make sure that the screw holes line up which they do beautifully, so that's fine. So now, just to give this a bit of rigidity, I'm going to install the new output jack to the plate. Now, sometimes the cavity where these go in can be a little bit tight inside, so if you can do, I like to wire the wires on the inside of here just to kind of keep everything out of the way. So we're just gonna tin these parts initially. Don't want too much solder on here, just enough to grip that wire and cover up the gaps. Nice, good quality. 2% silver sol solder I use, Autosol solder, really good stuff. So we'll just confer our notes. So we know that the white is the tip. Nine volt is gonna be going to the ring. All right. When I say nine volt, I mean that that's the wire that is the uh, the negative wire that goes to the nine volt battery that powers the pickups. So that's on there. We have actually got plenty of space in here, so I'm just going to do it on the outside of the uh, of the tags or the lugs for our American friends. Let's turn him off. That's in there. So we'll just give this a quick audio test just to make sure everything is working. Sounds good. Should be muted. Should be both. And that's just the neck. Beautiful. So once this is all screwed into place, it's another good just like practice to make sure just plug the jack in again and just make sure it's still working as it was before because sometimes if it's too tight in the back of there especially if you've got insulation paint on the inside or foil if it touches the wrong part of the output jack it could just short everything out and then you get no output at all which is obviously not ideal a little nice righty tighty plug her in that feels really nice and clean Wiggling it around, nothing happening there, so that's good. We've got our machine heads installed. We've got the new Tunematic bridge installed. We've got our new output jack and the output jack plate installed, and it's nice and solid and tight. All that's left to do now is we've got the new knobs to put on, and we just need to file down the saddles on the Tunematic bridge, and then we should be pretty much ready to go. Oh, I've done something very silly. We've not cleaned the jack, we had everything open would have been a perfect opportunity to clean everything out. But we'll do that later on as part of the inspection. Let's give it a little pull, there we go. So these nice classic 25K EMG pops. We're gonna put our new ones on. Well, we're just gonna make sure they fit first, which they do. Before we do that, we'll just give it a little tighten up. Sorry for that, keep banging into stuff. You Americans with your silly imperial numbers. What's wrong with millimeters, man? And do you know what's very strange is the nuts of these two pots are different sizes. How peculiar. Okay, 
so nice and tight again when you're tightening these up don't go hell for leather cranking it you just want it nice fixed into position and not wiggling around the thread lock stuff i was mentioning earlier i used to i was playing around with putting it on pots but then i realized you're kind of running the risk of dripping a bit of thread lock into the actual potentiometer on the inside of that which is obviously going to cause you loads of problems so i don't do that anymore don't bother with a thread lock on these just make sure they're nice and tight they're not going to go anywhere but like i say you don't want to over tighten them either wd-40 contact cleaner um really good stuff don't use wd-40 original because you'll get loads of nasty oil in there this is the contact cleaner one and I'm spraying this directly. Let's see if we can get action cam on this. Come on in, come on in. Action cam. Right, if you have a look where the straw is going, can you see that there? Is that going in? Yeah. You want it right in there. You don't want it on top, because that's gonna do nothing. You don't want it on top of the pot when the guitar's the other way around, because that's gonna do nothing. You want it right in that little gap there spray directly into it you don't want too much just a little bit okay and then while the back of it's open we're going to put these on and then literally once you've sprayed it in there you're just going to do this with your hand and you'll feel after a while it will really loosen up don't need to clean the output jack because it's brand spanking new if I'm not mistaken then, I think all the new parts have been installed. We've got the new Goto machine heads on, they've gone on beautifully. We've got the new Pure Tone stereo output jack. We've got a new gold Goto plate. We've got new volume and tone pot knobs. You could do with a little gold one of them, couldn't you? Let's just put a bang a bit of switch cleaner in this as well while we're here. So by the way, I say this in every video, but every guitar I do gets one of these setup service certificates. It sort of fulfills two things really. One for you, it just gives you a nice breakdown of everything I've done on the guitar. I value the guitar as well. So if you want to insure it, if you're going out on tour, or even if it's just something that you've got sat at home, you want to know the value of it and you want to insure it. You can use this as proof of purchase and as evidence that you've got the guitar and the valuation of it. So that's a nice little handy thing, but it's obviously it's got your gauges on. So if you're like, oh, what string gauges did I, did I put on it? They're all written down here. This or the, the second reason I use this as well is it just it's just a good thing for my own mind. It just helps you have a systematic view and go, oh, I've forgotten to do that. So this way, absolutely everything gets done. You get a report of it so you can see everything that I've done to your guitar. That's all back together. We're gonna, we're gonna leave the tuning matter bridge off for now. Probably makes sense now to uh, move on to the neck and make some neck adjustments. The frets on this guitar are in a pretty good condition. Uh, it's a 25 and a half scale. So I'm happy with just doing a bit of a polish. There are a couple of indentations on the lower frets, fret one, two, three, uh, got a couple of little notches on, but the kind of, it's more of a cosmetic thing really. You can't really feel it when you're running your finger over there. I discussed it with the client, he's not bothered about it. So we're gonna leave them as they are. Obviously it's a rosewood board, so we're gonna look at doing a bit of oiling on this just to sort of soak it up, stop it from uh, drying up. Any kind of porous wood, I tend to put a bit of oil on just to kind of stop that from happening. So the first thing I do generally is I clean it. I use this almost as a little cleaner. So we're just gonna dab a few little bits on first and this is just gonna help us clean the guitar and it just gets that first coat of oil in there as well. Tried and true, Dunlop 65, lemon oil, good stuff. Nice and easy to use. So this is, like I said, just the kind of the initial cleaning stage. This this guy's kept it pretty clean, to be fair. There's not really a whole amount that needs doing, which is really appreciated because sometimes people bring guitars in in pretty nasty conditions, especially if they're a smoker and they like eating quavers and, you know, are just general mucky bastards. Look after the guitar, it'll look after you. And that sounds like a proper old man thing to say, but it's true, innit? Do you know what I mean? You gotta look after it, clean it. Only takes a few minutes, done it. So, initial clean down, then we're gonna polish up the frets, then we're gonna oil the fret board, and then we're going to put on some strings and tune up this pitch. 
so that's looking pretty nice already to be fair um, talking of mucky fretboards I'm looking at you Mark Beard you know what I'm talking about mate you know what I'm talking about I use these lovely little um, music nomad fret shields really nice little thing to help you polish your frets they've got five elastic bands you're just gonna attach at the back hold it nice and steady so you can see all the frets are exposed there and then I like to just put a bit of tape there just to secure it in place just to stop it from wiggling around Beautiful. I'll tell you what it's a lot of brain memory trying to keep on top of all these microphones and all these cameras um, so I hope you're enjoying it I hope it's worth it because it's taken quite a hell of a lot of time a fair amount of money you know putting all this together so I really hope you appreciate all the stuff that I'm showing you and by all means if there is something specific that you want to see or you know a particular guitar that you'd like to see me work on drop a comment and uh, I'll have a little look see and if we've got something coming in different guitars are coming in all the time I think that's one of my favorite things about not touring anymore I, I do miss touring I miss aspects of it I miss working the show and the actual adrenaline of, and of all that stuff and and hanging out with good people you know that's probably the best thing about it some of my best mates now are, are people I've met out in the world but anyway I digress the thing that is really cool about having your own shop and not being on tour is you get to work on different stuff all the time and sometimes when I was on tour with certain bands that I'd you know uh, bring me for example I worked for them for about seven years and as, as fun as that was and as amazing places we got to work in you're kind of just working on the same five or six guitars every day and you know the nature of working on a guitar every day, making sure it's clean, making sure it's got fresh strings on it and all that stuff is nothing really tends to go wrong with them because you're kind of looking after it every day. Unless you're Gav and you work for Idols, um, I think he's pretty much having to rebuild guitars every day, bless him. But it's just been really nice to work on tons of different guitars. So, you know, keep them coming. I love working, the weirder, the better. So let's get our Dremel ready. Starting at this, this end, uh, we'll just drop a cloth over the top of the guitar as well to make sure we're not scratching anything up. And we're just going to go, and all we're doing basically is just polishing these frets. Got a little foot controller down here that's really handy. So how are we looking? Looking pretty nice, pretty clean. Okay, so let's remove the tape. Cheers for bearing with me with all this. I appreciate there's a lot of stuff in this video. Hopefully you're getting a kick out of it and you're learning, well, learning something or enjoying watching it or whatever it is. I'm not trying to say I'm a good teacher or anything like that, but you know. I, uh, I'm really enjoying making these videos to be honest so it just makes me think more about I guess what I'm doing and you know if it's helping out other people learn how to do it in the progress then that's a, that's a good bonus isn't it but so they are absolutely gleaming now so let's get some oil get a nice thick coat of this now and we're going to leave this for about five minutes just to sink in and while we're doing that we'll start pulling the strings through Dario Nickel Wound XL 148s 60 to 12 and drop C. Don't want to tip this too much. So if you see a little P after the number on your string gauge pack, uh, it means plain and basically it means it hasn't got any windings on it. She's through. Okay, we're gonna remove this excess lemon oil. 
And the thing to watch out with this is once you've wiped it off, there'll still be a little bit of excess. As the wood moves around and stuff like that, there'll be a little bit of oil coming in and out of it, but don't worry about it. Just kind of get the majority of it off. Let's have a quick visual inspection of the pickups as well, just to make sure they're all kind of secure and in the right place they seem to be. We might want to do a bit of normalizing later on with them, just to kind of put them into the right place. So on these strings, uh, I use like a over and under technique. So you just want to pull the string all the way through, all the way to there till it's kind of tight. And then with your thumb and your finger on the edge of the nut there, you're just going to pull it back about a fret's worth. And then just hold it there, keep your finger in position there. And we're going to go over the top of the string and then underneath the bottom of it. And you'll see as we pull through here, it's just going to sandwich that string in the middle and keep everything nice in position. Get rid of the excess almost straight away. So this is going to be in drop C, plug her in. I'll just unmute it so you can hear what I'm doing. So obviously we've put a put a brand new bridge on so there's going to be a little bit of level adjusting here but just getting literally like a rough ballpark of where we are before i even sit with the guitar and start looking at the neck and 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 all that kind of thing just kind of kind of get everything roughly where we want it and then we've got a good starting point to do everything else so drop c so the next string is going to be g we go over the top if you've not seen one of these uh, strobe tuners before by the way just to give you a quick heads up how they work so as you can see sometimes the circles are going clockwise like that sometimes they go anti-clockwise like that and the aim of the game with the strobe tuner is to get it so that the wheel doesn't move at all so if it's going this way it means it's flat the string is flat And if it's going this way, it means the string is sharp. Makes sense, doesn't it? The aim of the game is to get it there so it's not moving. We're in a ballpark, like I say, we're not worrying about keeping this perfectly in tune at the moment. All we are doing is making sure that the tension on the guitar is roughly where it needs to be. When I say tension, it basically means how much the string is pulling back on the headstock that's literally what it means over and under i've been a little bit too quick with that see and i'm not going to edit it out because everyone makes mistakes not put quite enough so on a plain string should i say when i'm restringing let's just get that in there oh shit. and that's what happens when you don't do it right first time but as i said i'm not going to edit it out because i'm honest right everyone makes mistakes okay so pull that through let's do this again but we'll do it properly this time so on wound strings, you're going to pull back a fret's width. On plain strings, a fret and a half. A fret and a half. But if you're from Sheffield, you say fret and a half. And that's just all there is to it. So, nice and tight. Give that a nice tight pull back. With this being a thinner string, it means more stretching is going to be required because it doesn't have any winds on it. And therefore... It doesn't really have anything to grip onto. So I put a little bit more wind on the machine head, more like two and a half, three winds. So you can really pull it nice and tight because that's the key to keeping these in, in tune. You want to put them on the right way, make sure there's not too much excess at the top. Okay, I've made a mistake there on my form. I've put G and it's not, it's an F. But again, I'm not going to edit it out because I'm honest. Try this again. So we've got everything back on. The Tunematic bridge has been installed, but we need to make sure that these fret slots are filed down properly. They're just kind of out of the box. 
they get like a little incision in each one of them um, but we want to make sure that these are all nicely in place so before we do anything else we're just going to check the neck and make sure the neck is straight so sometimes it's good to do it in this position just kind of have it stood and adjust it so you can see straight down see exactly what you're doing and that's nice and straight now so can have a little look at the action the initial look at the action see what we're doing so action is a little bit high I'm just going to drop that down just a touch just take it down to about there and about there so the other thing with these tunematic bridges is you need to make sure that the saddles are set up correctly and it's set to the correct radius just putting my radius gauge on here actually that looks pretty good so it's dialed in uh, they, they all uh, are at set height so each one of these saddles uh, for example these two at the end here are a little bit lower these are a little bit higher and they're the highest point in the middle and it follows that curvature the 12 inch curvature of the neck however with this being a really thick string on the bottom we're just going to need to file this down just so it sees a little bit better at the moment it's kind of if you can see there it's kind of sliding around before we do this just going to loosen that off a little bit so this is a 60 gauge string i'm going to start so i have, do actually have a 60 file which is quite handy a little 60 guy and we're literally just going to put a few little initial notches in it just to kind of get it singing where we need to when you do this make sure you're doing it nice and straight you don't want to be doing it at an angle like that you want to be doing this nice and straight Now this is going to be quite rough to start with, as in the, the material, the metal is going to feel quite rough. Obviously we're going to file this down to where we need it and then we're just going to sand it down just to get rid of all those rough edges. So that's sitting in better already, it's still a little bit too high in terms of the radius positions. we're sitting in exactly where we need it which is awesome so the next thing we're going to do is just get some sandpaper so we'll start with something a little bit on the rougher side so I have all these little sandpapers in various different sizes so the best way to do this is well the best way that I found get your file you want to probably go down a size so this is a 60 gauge slot I'm going to go down to a 50 and then I'm just going to wrap it with a little bit of sandpaper so as I said before in previous things rudimentary ways of fixing things works a treat because it's the exact size that you need or thereabouts you can already tell how much smoother that is so that was a 240 grit and then we'll do a 400 and an 800 1200 2000 and we should be should be golden get it really nice and smooth and just have a feel with your fingers so that's in a nice position so I'm just going to get it into playing position again and see where we're at so that's nice probably the actions on a little bit of the low side now but I'm just going to do this uh, other string so this is a 46 so the closest to that I've got is 42 so again just work it into the groove that's already there nice straight and I'm just going to do that on the rest of the slots um, and go from there so okay so now we've made our neck adjustment we're just going to make sure that the string slot in the nut is wide enough he had a 56 on it before we've upped it to a 60 but it looks like the slot the string's gone straight in we've got a nice clearance there everything looks tip top so happy with the nut gonna leave that exactly where it is so we're gonna put the truss cover back on and then we just got our final little bits of action setting and intonation we'll stretch the strings clean it down and then this bad boy will be done so I'm guessing that this saddle here is gonna to need to go that way quite a lot so when you set an intonation you always want to do this in a plain position ie sat like this not on a bench the reason for that is when it's on the bench like this the weight of the guitar is pushing down on that neck rest and it's just ever so slightly going to mess the tension up however 
you can get a rough approximation of where it is in this position and then I fine tune it when I sit down. It gets you to within, you know, five or 10 cents close and then you can just perfect it after that. So when it's live flat like this, I'll just get the ballpark intonation set. And as I said, I'll then put it into playing position and dial it in finally. So all we're gonna do, and I'll turn a tuner off for this. All we're gonna do here is play the string open and then play the string on the 12th fret. And you want those tuning to be exactly the same, i.e. if you play it, the string open, G, just check the camera can see that. Okay, so remember, if it's going this way, it's flat. If it's going this way, it's sharp. The aim of the game is to get it so that it's not moving at all. So that's just about in tune. Okay, that's C, and then on the 12th, so it's buzzing a little bit. We'll just bring the action up a little bit. And as I said again, I can't stress enough that you must do this in playing position rather than on a bench like this. I'm just getting 90% there when it's on the bench. We'll do the rest in playing position. So. So that buzz has gone now. So that's good. So we've got a good height. Just check again on my lap. And in terms of the action, generally what I do is I get it as low as I can without any buzzing going on. That's pretty much the optimal way to do it. So C, a little bit on the sharp side. So if it's sharp, the saddle is going to need to go this way. If it's flat, the saddle isn't going to need to go that way. I.e. if it's sharp, you need to make the string longer. So the distance between the end of the saddle there and the end of the nut there, that is effectively what your scale length is. When the intonation is sharp, you need to widen the scale. If it's flat, you need to shorten it. So open, little sharp. So I'm gonna need a small uh, Phillips for this. Now you wanna loosen the string off It'll move a lot easier. And then the saddle is just going to go towards here because it's sharp. So we'll stick it around there, tune it back up to pitch. sharp so we'll just send it back a little bit I'm just gonna split the difference on this one as well now another thing I've noticed as I've just been tuning these up with these being new machine heads and um, they're a little bit loose so I'm just gonna tune those up tighten those up a little bit Feels good. Little sharp. So if it's sharp, you want to lengthen the string, send it that way. Looks good. Up to pitch. Now while we're here, we're just going to normalize the pickups, which essentially just means making sure that both the pickups are the same volume. So to my ears, the bridge pickup sounds a little quieter, so I'm just going to raise that up a little bit. So we've got a nice uh, nice range on the two of them. So everything's pretty much done now. We've set the intonation, we've set the radius on here, we set the action, 
uh, it's playing really really nicely so the last thing to do now is to put it into a playing position and then just compare it basically now when you tune in as well make sure you tune from your thickest string to the thinnest string so from the the bottom of the guitar to the top sometimes mm. people call that the top but technically it's the bottom bottom end the thickest string because that's going to have the biggest effect on the tuning the thicker the string the more it's going to move so we're still a bit sharp on that string so we're gonna send it back other thing to make sure as well is that all these um where all your strings go that there's no notches there so you want to make sure that they just press down here get rid of any knots and also on the top here just bend them in I tend to have to do this bit without gloves on because nothing worse than trying to stretch a string with gloves on. The cool thing with tuning matting bridges is once they're dialed, they don't go anywhere. Um, just make sure that when you take the saddle off, you take the bridge piece off to restring it. Just put a little bit of masking tape on the runs a little spinny guys and it just stops it from moving. Wicked, really happy with that. Everything's playing really nicely, looking really nicely. So now we just need to stretch the strings, give it a bit of a polish, and we're done. Action cam off, see ya. Plug it in, that'd be handy, wouldn't it? But yeah, basically, the final thing we're gonna be doing now, stretching the strings. You wanna do this basically on every string until it doesn't go out of tune anymore. So wrap a C now, if you notice when I stretch this, open it up, it's gonna go flat. Bring it back up, stretch again. You need to do this about four or five times. Just bear in mind as well when you're doing this, you are pulling the neck a little bit this way. So it'll take a little, take a minute or two to settle afterwards. You'll probably find if you're stretching your strings, you get them all tuned up. You go back to it five minutes later, everything will be a, bit, a little bit sharp. And that's just because the, the wood has relaxed back into its place and essentially pulled the string back a little bit. So just something to bear in mind. If you're doing this, if you are going to stretch your strings, which I 100% recommend you do, if you want your guitar to stay in tune, just make sure you do it a few minutes before the show. Don't be doing this a minute before you go on because you're going to find it's going to go out of tune when you're on stage. Stretch again. Flat. So we're just gonna let that settle now for a couple of minutes. We'll do the final, just nice, clean, clean and polished on the guitar. This is my favorite cloth. One of those uh, car detailing ones I was talking about. Really good, really nice little cloth. So yeah, really happy with this. It looks really, really pretty. Um, we've got a nice finish with that gold hardware. Just gonna spray directly onto the cloth rather than onto the guitar. Nice, nice finish on it. Polish up these uh, tuners, get them nice and gleaming as soon as they're brand new. And we'll just go around the back and the sides of the guitar. Get all this lovely, clean and shiny. It's lovely when they've got a nice lacquered finish like that because you can just get that glassy mirror finish. We'll just go through our checklist, make sure that we've done everything. So pre-set up intonation we didn't do because we changed the bridge. So I'm just going to put NA in those ones. So we tightened the truss rod. The neck was adjustable. 
tuners were in good working order but we replaced them anyway the nut was good frets are good output jack wasn't good we replaced that the pots were good switch yes wiring yeah it was okay screws yes pickup seated correctly yes hardware yeah strap pins just give them a feel make sure that they're not loose they're good and the strings are allocated so we cleaned and tightened and locked the tuners we obviously replaced them as well there was no string tree on the guitar so didn't adjust that nut slots were cleaned and lubricated i think i didn't i think i forgot to show the lubricating bit but there we go frets cleaned and polished fretboard cleaned and oiled strings are installed neck tension adjusted to, to spec we, we tightened that up a little bit action radius and intonation set yes string stretch yes the pots were cleaned and tightened jacks were cleaned and tightened switches cleaned and tightened pickups normalized and strap pins so this has been a 2009 esp ltd mh250 thanks for joining me this has been my first video i've really enjoyed doing it thanks for tuning in i've really enjoyed going through the process and everything it's taken about three times as long as it normally does but i hope you guys got a kick out of it if you do keep an eye stay subscribed to the channel or join if you if you if you're not done already and there's going to be plenty more content coming soon so thanks for checking it out nice one see you soon